1980, the French literary critic and theorist Roland Barthes wrote a book called Camera Lucida, which was to become one of the most influential pieces of writing in the study of photography. Surprisingly, the book was neither a study of the semiotics of photography, nor its techniques or theories. Instead, the book was about grief and loss, an unapologetically personal and intimate recounting of Bath's own bereavement after the loss of his mother. In Camera Lucida, Bath writes about the effect a photograph can have on its viewer, which he divides into two categories, the studium and the punctum of photographs. The studium refers to the subject and cultural context of a photograph, the source of the viewer's polite interest in the photograph, while puncta refers to something more abstract that goes beyond the image, the emotions, the visceral punch in the gut that the photograph evokes in you. I'm reminded of this as I go through my own family album, images of distant relatives captured in time on silver gelatin, a young bride smiling hopefully at the camera, a family captured in their prime of life, reduced to a single remaining member 60 years later, cousins in their grandparents' garden caught mid-flight and impatient to get back to their game, confident in their camaraderie, yet unaware of the distance that will come in the way of petty feuds, growing up, moving away. Family albums are a common feature of photographic cultures, yet rarely seriously discussed. They seem at once too commonplace, too ritualistic and conservative, yet conversely, too diverse and difficult to categorize. They are seldom valued as objects in their own right. My family album dates back to the early 1920s when my grandparents first arrived in Malaya. The photographs which range from the 1920s to 1960s is a visual narrative of my own family history and in a wider sense, the history of Malaya itself. The studium then of my family album, like those of many Malaysians, is the story of migration. One of the earliest photographs in the album is a studio portrait of my maternal grandparents and their two-year-old son in 1931 in Johor, Malaya. Three years earlier, my grandfather, a newly qualified young doctor, had arrived in Port Swettenham on the SS Rajula to join the British Medical Service. He was 29 years old. My grandfather would work in the medical services for over 25 years at general and district hospitals all over Johor. After my grandfather started working, my grandmother joined him and they soon had a son and a daughter born in Johor Bahru. This early family life is chronicled in the albums with studio photographs taken in nearby Singapore. My grandfather was a great believer in documenting family life and there are studio photographs commemorating birthdays, anniversaries, and sometimes for no discernible reason at all. By the late 1930s, the album reflected the shifts that occurred when my family began to slowly set roots in Malaya. Photographs of the larger extended family in Kerala began to be outnumbered by photographs featuring just the immediate family, and later, the friends who became de facto family in this new country they were beginning to call home. Snapshots of casual picnics, celebratory teas, Christmas festivities with friends taken with a Kodak brownie are included with more formal family portraits. As part of a small community, the Orthodox Syrian Christians from Kerala, strong ties were established with the other families who had settled in Malaya. Without the traditional support of female relatives, it was friends who were on hand when my grandmother gave birth to my mother during the early days of the Japanese occupation. Friends were also on hand to help celebrate a work promotion, birthdays, school prize givings, college admissions, all of the small landmarks and triumphs that make up a life. One of my favourite photographs is one of both my paternal and maternal grandparents taken in a studio in Johor in the late 1930s. They were family friends and often spent weekends together. While my maternal grandfather was a doctor in the Johor Medical Service, my paternal grandfather was a teacher in the Malacca High School. In this photograph, the grandfathers, both in their 30s, stand behind the other's wife, 
which in the 1930s, certainly amongst the Orthodox Syrian Christian community, would have been perceived as fairly outlandish, even risque. I'm not sure why exactly they did this. Perhaps they thought it was an appropriately modern gesture, one that reflected their existence in this new modern age. It certainly makes a good story. For me, this photograph is a poignant realization that my grandparents were once young, navigating their way with their two small families through life in a new country full of possibilities and challenges, whom in a moment of playfulness and camaraderie decided to immortalize their friendship in a photograph that years later would carry so much meaning and sentiment for the mutual grandchildren that would come out of a union between one son and one daughter not yet born 30 years later. In the album, there is another photograph from the late 1930s of what might or might not be a fancy dress party in Johor Bahru. The photograph is memorable because sitting around the table was supposedly the late Sultan Ibrahim of Johor, looking very casual in short sleeves. Sitting next to him was a Dr. Luther, who was a friend and colleague of my grandfather. Not everyone has embraced a fancy dress theme, but there he sits, looking very undoctorish, wearing a resplendent turban and elaborate sash, a diamond earring twinkling in one ear. A man who obviously knew how to party. In March 1942, just a few years later, during the early days of the Japanese occupation, Dr. Luther, together with my grandfather and four other doctors, would be interrogated for a charity dinner and dance they had organised to collect donations for the British Wharf Fund in December 1941. While the rest were released, Dr. Luther and another doctor friend, Dr. Perenbin, were shot and killed by the Japanese in front of the hospital staff, including the other doctors. We had heard this story and others like it from our uncle, who had been 12 years old during the occupation and remembered it well. But seeing the photograph of Dr. Luther, captured in the promise of his prime, brought home the horror of those wartime experiences. During the occupation, my grandfather burned a lot of old photographs, particularly those that included the English doctors he had worked with, many of whom had now returned to the UK or were interned in POW camps, in case it provoked suspicion that he was sympathetic to the British. After the occupation, my grandfather resumed work as a doctor and would work in general hospitals around Johor, in Moa, Pontian, Johor Bahru. There are numerous family photographs in the 1940s and 50s as our country moved towards independence. Photos that are particularly meaningful to me, as many of them included my mother. As a small child photographed with her much older siblings, a young girl accepting a prize for literature, an awkward teenager in a studio photographed with her parents. There is something poignant about seeing one's parent as a child. This realization that she had an existence long before you and that her life seemingly so intertwined with yours was always completely separate. These are happy family photographs but photographs can only present what is on the surface. Something so interior as family memories are essentially undocumentable. For my family those memories were the effects such traumatic experiences during the occupation had on my grandfather. Scars that never quite healed. He was a sensitive and gentle man who had studied English literature before taking up medicine, who loved poetry, music, circuses, and going to the photo studio. He never completely recovered from the atrocities he witnessed and would suffer nightmares for the rest of his life. Photography is that strange alchemy of chemistry and art almost magical in the uncanny way it can replicate persons and events and can capture a moment in time for all eternity. More than any other art form, photography evokes time, mortality, memory, because of its very nature, the split second already gone even as the shutter clicks. A family album kept through the years is special. Spiral bound, coming apart with age, its photograph stuck with glue on black back paper. Every photograph is precious, almost talismanic. 
because the knowledge that these actual 4x5 pieces of photographic paper with their curled edges were once physically held, examined and valued becomes a real tangible connection between one generation and the next. Most of the photos in my family album were taken by amateurs, but it does not make them any less valuable. The word amateur originates from the Latin amatorem, meaning love. The photo album is about community. It is about connection. And it is an act of love and belonging. Susan Sontag wrote that all photographs are memento mori. To take a photograph is to participate in another person's mortality. Oz Barthes wrote in Camera Lucida, what pricks me is the discovery of this equivalence. In front of the photograph of my mother as a child, I tell myself she's going to die. I shudder over a catastrophe which has already occurred. Whether or not the subject is already dead, every photograph is this catastrophe. There is one particular photograph in my album of a distant cousin who bore more than a passing resemblance to Ingrid Bergman. She would die of tuberculosis in the 1950s, a young mother whose death would leave her three small children bereft. To me, she seemed so vital and alive in this casual moment, caught and printed on a random piece of photographic paper. Yet two years later, she would no longer exist. As a child, I would often stare at the photograph wondering whether the melancholy look in her eyes was some harbinger of the fate that would befall her. Perhaps the sadness you feel looking at old photographs of family members long since gone is that it also reminds you of your own mortality, that you too will shuffle off this mortal coil. And if you are fortunate, that 50 years later, an image of yourself in an album might elicit a memory, regret, even love. Perhaps that is why, in this digital age, we continue to photograph every experience, every meal, every event, as if by capturing it, we can make it last forever, even as it becomes in that very moment part of our past. Perhaps it is also a way to say to the generations that are to come, maybe even to ourselves, that for a very brief period on this earth, we existed and that our lives in some small way, mattered.